if he is the Messiah. He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. All right, that's fine. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him that read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As you well know, the title of this sermon is called The Skull. The Skull. Golgotha. It's also called Calvary in Latin. And they came to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. The place of the skull. You see, it was beneath a cliff and contained two sunken holes that looked like eyes that resembled a skull. Where historically it was believed that this was the place of Jesus' execution, a garbage dump outside Jerusalem. The skull, their skulls, our skulls, are a constant reminder of our own mortality. It is simply the shell that once held the human brain and all of his or her thoughts and memories, our successes and our downfalls our hate and our love, the foolishness and the wisdom that eventually will be no more. Our scripture today has Jesus at the hill of the skull between two criminals. However, the criminal's words were accepted by Jesus. And then if you read on, you realize then the curtain of the temple tore and the darkness overcame the region. For after today, it means a new day, a new era of what is inaugurated by the resurrection. But for innocent lives in the world through grace alone. You see, heaven is the resting place of the redeemed and is open to those who trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now today, we're going in here and we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving, a 
time for us to contemplate our blessings in our lives and to remember the washing of our baptisms into the person that God would have us to be in this world and towards one another. And so now we leave the sanctuary and we, that's where we're going and some people in this room are missing. Some of our people have gone to glory ahead of us. But today, in this space, we can still remember their voices, their challenges, the devotion, the redeeming qualities of those who have gone before us, and for every thankful moment that we had with them. You see, Madam Betty is not here anymore. Madam Casey, not here anymore. Sir Pete, not here anymore. Madam Linda, not here anymore. And I can go on and on and on. Bob, you could probably list 20 at least. But because they are not here anymore, it is not a reason to be sad. Because you see, they, I'll just say it, their spirit is still here. Their love and their guidance. Casey's way of telling me, now Cheryl, she would, that's how she would, now Cheryl. <laughs> and then she'd tell me something that I didn't maybe want to hear. <laughs> but I needed to hear. You see, that's the thanksgiving of it. And yes, we do celebrate those things with tears. Now, you would think that working in hospice, that I have a real strong understanding of my own immortality. I thought I did until my 40-some-year-old son came over yesterday, and I had him put up some pictures because I kind of reorganized the wall. And you know, when you buy something new like a mirror and you put it up, it was bigger than the other mirror, and it had to be centered. <laughs> it had to be centered just right, and then the pictures had to go up, and my son saw a picture that my mother had in her condo. And he said just as blatantly, when you go, I want this. Mm -hmm. And then his wife said, well, I want, I, I, I want the uh, couch. Oh. <laughs> and then he said, well, you know, while we're at it, and I'm like, shut up. I am here right now. <laughs> Let us enjoy what we got right yes. now. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let us laugh and let us cry and let us oh, run if we can. Remember running? Anybody in here running? <laughs> let us walk. Let us stand up, sit down. Let us do the things that life at least in this body today, allows us to do. Knowing that if we, and if we can do these things in the proper and decency and in order out there in the world, we bring a positiveness of Jesus Christ in how we move and shape in the world, okay? even though our children are pointing out things that they're going to have after we die. <laughs> That's why I'm going to spend all the money. <laughs> so they can have all of my sermons, my books, and that's about it. And maybe the art, and the grandfather clock, and the couch, <laughs> Thanksgiving is about living. 
it doesn't mean that we forget those that speak the truth in love and in honor. But as Jesus was on the cross and the criminal said to him, basically, I want to go with you. This was a man that did not do anything. He was innocent. And how many of us would be innocent and still say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do? I don't know about you, but I probably, being the fighter that I am, would go kicking and screaming, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus walked in this earth with grace and humility, talking to people that socially he shouldn't have talked to, women and people that were unclean, doing things that he shouldn't have done. And the Pharisees made sure that he was punished for those things. Now, isn't it interesting in this life that certain some of us are punished for what we do and others seem to get away with things? Mm -hmm. And that probably mm -hmm. upsets most people. But what would Jesus do? Wipe the sand off your feet and keep on walking. Know that I am your God. Know that I will always be with you. Know that when you get down on your knees, and yes, some of us can't get back up, but know that you are redeemed. And that means that the macaroni and cheese is gone. <laughs> Somebody take it out, please, or just check on it. <laughs> Thank you. That's the reality of life, isn't it? The reality of life is that in the midst of the Holy Spirit in this room, there is laughter, there is breath, there is love, and there is life. And Jesus said on the cross, it is done. It is done. It's a good thing. Jesus gave every ounce of who he was and is and now in his life. How many of us can say that? How many of us can say that we've done our best. But you know what? Those of you in this room, you still have time to do that. You are still breathing. <laughs> Diana's home, but you're here. She's still breathing. You can still <laughs> see her smiling face. Bob, Hawes, and, and Dee, they're sick but they still have each other. And one is getting sicker and sicker. So it's important that we remember that this skull is just it. It's just a shell of who we are. And the rest of it belongs to the Lord. That conscience that love, that devotion, that is the essence of who we are in the Holy Spirit. And that day that Jesus was crucified, that curtain tore on the temple. And it tore. And when you tear something, you can't necessarily put it back together the way it should be, the way we want it to be, in order and looking pretty and nice. Jesus didn't say that you're going to have a perfect life. Nothing is going to be easy. But 
but it will be blessed if we can remember who we are in Christ. That's what the skull is about. And so, even though this was not a happy gospel, it was a true gospel. And it was the redeeming gospel of how Jesus Christ will have us to be. Now, you think that God would stand out of the ruins. Well, God did. When Jesus was crucified, things changed. The Holy Spirit was born again in each and every generation in you, in our children. And yes, sometimes we don't think about others. Sometimes we're a little bit more selfish than we should be. But I think we come around. The circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by. So on this day, as we are having Thanksgiving, and as we are fellowship today, we honor those two, those voices that are not heard the same way. But most of all, we honor the voice of Jesus, of a man that was put to death, who was innocent. I don't think any one of us can be put to death in that way and say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Let us know today what we do in Christ. Let us be cognizant of others and how we walk in this world. Let us know that we can be humble, and that is our strength. And yes, we can put that ego and junk that gets in the way, the way that we like to have stuff perfect, because we're so imperfect. We're just human beings. But we are redeemed in the Holy Spirit. We are forgiven by Jesus Christ. We are human beings. And today, we remember that because we can give thanks for being in this space, in this time, and loving one another. Amen. 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 And that was a sermonette. <laughs>